Ready? Okay. All right. Sorry about the delay. Um, so my talk today is about a little bit state of the security and some uh, 2016 predictions. Uh, this obviously we're in the July time frame, so this some of these predictions uh, that I wrote down here and made were uh, a little bit more in the beginning of the year on the January February time frame. Uh, my name is Jason Samiti. Uh, I know some of you guys out there, some of you may not know me. Uh, I work for a company called Stealthcare. We're based out in Cleveland. Uh, a little about me, um, I've been trying to break computers since about 99-ish, 98 time frame. Um, I thought it was cool watching uh, war games and having a 14-4 modem until my neighbor got a 19-8 or whatever it was. Um, started my IT career at National City, which is now PNC Bank. Um, seen a lot of different networks, been a consultant since 2010. Um, and I'm not really good at public speaking, so bear with me. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about, some of these topics, some of the cyber realities, uh, how history repeats itself, both in, in you know real life history and in cyber history. Um, cyber intelligence, a lot of people say one thing and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people so trying to define what cyber intelligence is uh, to me and, and finally the 2016 predictions uh, so amazingly you know these are some of the stats that some of you people already know about um, but cybercrime is still the largest motivation behind uh, a lot of these um, hacks if you will uh, Typically, it's it's money motivated, which I'll I'll point out later on in the slide deck. Um, but definitely, um, money is is the driving factor here. Um, and and who who are they targeting? It's still industry um, and and online forums. So that could be you know uh, different platforms. Uh, I'm waiting to see. Sometimes in the very near future, uh, a lot of the IoT stuff. I think uh, the presenter previous had a Bluetooth toilet. Um, everything is going w with an IP address or some type of Bluetooth type of connection. Um, I, I'm looking to see this these Pi uh, pieces increase um, with a lot of that IoT type stuff. Where is that information from? I'm sorry? Where is that? Uh, this is from the Verizon uh, breach report. The Verizon breach report. Um, and surprisingly, SQL injection still does exist. Um, it, it's just amazing how we still can't seem to protect ourselves from that. And then unknown is, is probably the, the, the largest piece. So why is it unknown? Obviously, you know, we don't know that, but it's, it's some type of combination, whether it be um, a company is breached, then, then their IR team kicks in, and then there's really not much from a forensic standpoint that they can point to other than this system was compromised and this data was exfiltrated. So it's very difficult to understand how that attack actually occurred uh, if there's nothing in place um, to detect that. And again, this is kind of leaning towards, which I'll get to later on, uh, how we as um, organizations, not so much as security practitioners, are very reactive and we need to get in a better mindset of being more proactive. And then finally, uh, portable devices and electronic media are, are the, the biggest um, causes of data loss. And again, there, there's you know news articles day in and day out uh, about how all these people uh, have lost money and things of that sort, and, and it's, it's becoming crippling to our society in, in the sense that you know, I'll, I'll use Target as an example. Um, we may say, okay, great, all my charges got reversed. I get a new card. But at the end of the day, it's still going to cost us as consumers because our, you know, our loans go up 0.25%, things of that sort. And, and the difference uh, uh, between a credit card, hey, I get a new credit card. But if your health record is... is uh, compromised, it's very difficult to get a new health record because that's you, right? It's, it's two very different things. But again, we as consumers are, are 
basically just getting beat over the head with all a lot of this stuff. Um, so anybody here see these types of things before in the past? This is a growing list. So if anybody has anything that that they've heard that's interesting, I'd love to hear it. Um, number four is probably one of the biggest ones that I hear. Or seven, we've never been hacked, so, right? There's only two kinds of companies, right? Ones that have been hacked and ones that don't know it yet. So I, 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 do, I do get seven quite a bit. Um, our IT guys told us we're good. Um, that this is really becoming a huge problem because as C-level CEOs, CIOs are really becoming at the forefront uh, of you know going in front of Congress and, and basically telling government why they didn't do what they should have been doing. So um, that we renewed our antivirus, that's probably about a almost two years old, but it, I find it to be very comical. Somebody actually told me that as a as a reason for not to do any kind of proactive type security monitoring uh, of anything like that. But um, this is pretty much what a lot of companies think. And again, leads to being more um, uh, reactive because it's not until uh, they don't have the budget for these projects, but as soon as they get compromised, you know, the, the, the purse strings open uh, quite a bit and, and they'll pretty much spend whatever that needs to happen. Uh, in order for this to not be in the paper or, or legal fees and things of that sort. So, and then we had the dark web. Um, I think I read somewhere that Google uh, indexes roughly 19 to 20 percent of the entire internet, um, which you'd think that when you type in your search, it pretty much completes itself. So. Um, before you know you, you hit enter, uh, but that's a lot of internet that's that's not indexed by Google, um, and and that's where you have this deep web, dark web, dark net. I mean, there's all these different names associated with it, where a lot of the bad things happen. Uh, a lot of times, that's where your credit card or your health record is sold, and that's where you know some government agency will monitor that and then knock on your organization's door and say you have data going to this country you need to do something right now and then the company says well can you help us no <laughs> FBI can't help you but that that is you know a, a good depiction of of w what the web looks like um, that a lot of people don't see or, or you know read about so in this here Again, getting back to being more proactive, this does affect everybody here. Uh, if you look at um, some of the, the, the hacks that have, have gone on, um, it is now truly, you know, again, two types of companies, ones that have been compromised and ones that don't know yet. Everybody will get compromised at some point as long as they have uh, people working in their organizations. Um, that seems to be, you know, the weakest link. Um, ransomware is, is pretty popular these days. When you look at any organization, you have your security team and your IT team who are somewhat technical and pretty much can pick out a phishing email, but then you have accounts payable or HR that may not be as savvy or technical and say, you know, I can open up this PDF or this Excel and all these sure all enable macros. Um, and then you have, you know, your files zipped up and uh, then you have to, you know, get Bitcoin and all that good stuff. So uh, this, is, again, is from uh, the Verizon Breach Report. So 26.5%, it's kind of small on my screen here, uh, are, were not defendable. Um, that means basically any, any type of technology they had on their network, uh, whether it be next generation something or SIM something, whatever the case may be, um, there's no piece of technology that could prevent that type of hack. And, and typically it's because, um, well, most organizations let in email, right? So if it's, if it's an email, uh, chances are it's going to get through and, and to the right person. Um, 
for that to happen. And, and roughly three and a half million dollars of, of, of containing a cyber attack. Uh, and that, that is increasing because as, as more and more organizations do get compromised, uh, the, the, the need for in smart IR folks is becoming more and more in demand. Uh, a lot of them are hiring them or, or creating a program uh, within their organization that, that involves some type of forensic or IR. So that, that is also, um, that cost is increasing dramatically. So, anybody have a good, good answer for what threat intelligence is? Or, or a good example? No, um, it, it, it's tough. I mean, you know, we don't. Nobody really has a lot, a lot of information behind that. It, it means a lot of different things to different organizations. But basically, our, our current solutions are, are more geared towards uh, the large enterprise, and are kind of leaving the small to medium-sized companies uh, behind. And, and they have just as much to lose, uh, in some cases, more uh, than large organizations. Um, if you think of, you know, again, the target compromise. Um, you know, they, they survived that huge uh, hit to their reputation, uh, credit card loss of, of money, whereas uh, a, a smaller organization may not have been able to do that. Um, and again, we're always in this reactive mode. It's always when the breach occurs that, that we all hands on deck, Red Bull and no sleep, right, until we figure out what's going on. And we definitely need to change that, that mindset. And, and a lot of times the, the organizations that I do consulting for, that they're, they're kind of taking a lot of this information and just recycling it or, or somehow getting it recycled and, and putting it in a different format and, and not able to really make sense out of a, a lot of that stuff, which, which is, um, it makes for, for sl the slow process uh, for making uh, or at least having actionable uh, items to, to work on. So, I don't know if you guys watch you know, a lot of YouTube videos, but it doesn't really take a lot of, of education, if you will, to, to spoof an email or to, um, you know, fish, if you will. Um, preparation is very low, uh, and, and it's very cheap, and, and can be uh, re high rewards. So... But if there's a way that you know you, you could somehow um, take number two, where the industry is behind the curve in proactive analysis, uh, and, and kind of in, increase that level of of presence and, and and become more proactive, is there is there a possibility that we could somehow take that unknown slice of of that pie and and make it known, or at least decrease that slice significantly? So if you if you have this concept of, of I'll just call it zero day live, where research intelligence and and uh, we basically um, synthesize all this information is into some tool where if you had this platform that that would deliver this, so basically this zero day live theory uh, could potentially index. A lot of the dark web, a lot of the dark net, a lot of the things that Google, you know, maybe isn't indexing, so to speak, and look for that kind of stuff and, and collect it into one t platform, if you will, and, and, and look for a lot of these zero days, a lot of if the credit cards are being stolen, if, if you know, if if Jason on this user group is selling credit cards and Jason too is selling credit cards on this other user form, can we somehow associate the two based on how he's, his grammar or his methodologies that we can say that's the same person, right? So we start to profile bad actors, right? But if you put all this in, in a one type of, of platform, you know, is it possible to, to reduce uh, a lot of these attacks and, and really provide some actionable intelligence 
uh, to organizations to say, you know, if I'm in, in, in the, the power industry, I can say that, you know, somebody's looking for this type of SCADA information so that I could, you know, go to the power company and say, hey, somebody's trying to sell your, your or at least look for uh, SCADA information on, on your organization. So that, that's, um, that's threat intelligence, I guess, in, in my mind. Um, so. And, and then basically what you've built, or, or if you build it, the, the, I guess, the correct way, um, you, you would basically be, would be competing with a lot of the, the tools that your ISPs and the FBI and other agencies may have. Um, but if there's a way you start to predict uh, attacks based on what you see in, in the dark web or, or what you see in, in the uh, dark sides of, of where people normally don't go, right? Is there a way that you could predict that? Um, interesting concept. Um, is it possible? I think with technology, anything is possible. Just if, if you're getting the right type of input and if you're indexing the right things and if you're doing the right things, that platform could potentially be built um, to actually start to predict cyber attacks. So again, if you create this thing, that would that would uh, certainly be a game changer because no piece of technology that could combat that. Right? This is all intelligence based. Uh, it's 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 no, not a next gen thing on your uh, network. It's actually some type of feed. Uh, or, or something like that that would, would um, allow you to get that information and then put it into your network or, or assert your employees to say, hey, this is coming or this is imminent. We needed to take some type of action on, uh, based on that. Um, because as we're doing it right now uh, with, with all these pieces of technology and, um, you know, we, we, we are losing the battle. We're still three steps behind. Um, in this cyber war, this the cyber threats, uh, we still are very, very much behind the the game. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, getting back to the motivation for hacking. So this is. <coughs> Excuse me. The homeless hacker. Um, and, and he basically, again, um, was uh, arrested, convicted uh, of, of hacking uh, a lot of these, you know, uh, um, uh, WikiLeaks type, type of things. But, you know, again, his uh, quote unquote agenda was uh, unknown. Um, but now, uh, this guy, all he really wanted um, was a Porsche, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, that, that was his objective. He just wanted, you know, to hack things to get enough money to to buy a Porsche. Um, but he he was the one that hacked uh, TJ Maxx and Heartland. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is this is again um, a lot of their motivation uh, behind a lot of that stuff. And I think this is the last one. Um, this was uh, uh, he was actually the first juvenile uh, um, hacker. And then the, the guy here at the bottom, again, it was all money motivated. Um, so again, getting to the point where it, it's, it's, you know, that, that motivation is behind that. And, and this is why we're always being very reactive because it's not until after these guys have, you know, sat in a room with, you know, Red Bull and haven't slept for four days that they take your stuff and, and exfiltrate your data. Um, so, getting uh, switching gears a little bit about uh, history repeating itself. So, um, if you if you look here, so this is Louis Pasteur. Everybody knows who that is, right? So he, he wasn't, I guess, the smartest guy, but he he, he thought that um, disease was spread by germs, and and everybody looked at him and said, "You're crazy." Um, and after his five kids died, whatever, he made this statement that, you know, if you, you know, kind of control disease or, or, or rather germs, uh, not everybody's going to get sick and die, right? So now we pasteurize our milk and everybody lives, right? But again, people thought he was a quack, right? People didn't, didn't, didn't believe him, right? So, uh, but now he's revered as, as, you know, one of the pioneers. 
So same thing with this, this Ignitz guy. Um, they actually put him in a mental uh, asylum because he washed his hands while doing surgery. And he, didn't, he couldn't understand why, because he didn't understand germs per se, but he just knew that if he sanitized his hands, less people died on the operating table. So he wanted to say, we should all start washing our hands, so on and so forth. You're crazy. You're going to be put into a mental institution, right? But now that's one of the cornerstones of good medicine, right? Um, so these guys, um, I think there's seven or eight maybe. Um, yeah, seven. Uh, and their all names are all there. Basically said, and this is in 1998, that we're not safe. And this is in, in, in front of Congress, right? So now we are in 2016. Is there anything in your mind that has, has significantly changed? No, right? Because we're still in that reactive mode. We've been doing it for the last 20 years, and, and nothing has really changed. Uh, but they basically said uh, it, the federal government has, does not have the skills and, and will do nothing about it. And we've seen it time and time again. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it's asinine, right, to, to see these types of things. Um, I don't know what just happened. Uh, something changed in the resolution and it automatically resets. I'm not sure what's okay. going on with the laptop. I, I didn't touch it. Um, but again, nothing has significantly changed. So these guys are, are again, are, 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 you know, preaching. We need to change. We need to do something different. And it's just, it's not, you know, it's not happening. So again, these guys, these three teenagers, basically, from the 80s, uh, big time hackers and, and, and on dial up. I mean, imagine if these guys had an ISDN line or a DSL line. I mean, um, it's clear that we're, we're not learning anything from history, right? We still don't patch. We still have SQL injection. We still don't validate, uh, th you know, uh, pass weak passwords. We don't validate on, on our applications. Uh, we, we could send up Python scripts versus a Word document. It, it, you know, there's, there's, there's no validation there. So these are some of our cyber predictions. Again, I was uh, made these basically in, in the February time frame. Uh, anyone know what doxing is? You guys familiar with that term? No? That's basically, uh, for example, um, hacking into the, what, what city are we in? D not Dayton, but we're in Dayton. Kettering, the Kettering Police Department, taking all the information of all the police, depart uh, all the police officers and then uploading them to a public place. It's not really damaging per se, but if I'm a police officer, I don't want my home address posted anywhere, right? <clears throat> um, so that that is in increasing um, mo mobile bot networks, and I think that's uh, huge. Um, and, and again, this privacy war, um, which you know between Apple and FBI. Is it a privacy war? Is it an encryption war? That's actually on the next slide, so I just spoiled my own uh, presentation. Um, but again, you know, th these are, are, are um, on the forefront because as more people have Macs or, or uh, iPhones, you're going to see more and more iOS type uh, uh, driven attacks. <clears throat> so we know our, our basic countries that, that you know, we, we think that are, are bad uh, countries to watch for. And I put uh, Kenya and Argentina are probably the, the two newer ones that we've seen a lot of, of um, activity from. I think number 11 should be the U.S., but um, I don't know, maybe. So again, the encryption war, I think you're going to see more and more of this, right? Is it, is it an encryption war or is it a privacy war? And, and that some people think that it's the same. And some people have, have a clear delineation between, uh, you know, encryption standards versus privacy. <clears throat> uh, obviously depicted, uh, earlier this year with, uh, the San Bernardino shooting, um, 
FBI wanted Apple to put in a back door to, to get access to, to that person's phone, but that back door would have been through uh, every Apple device, and any of your people certainly say, well, I have nothing to hide. You can backdoor my phone all the time. But then when you put in the context of, can I go in your backyard or your, your home while you're not home? Well, no. Well, that's the same thing, right? I mean, it's without your, your, your knowledge. So, again, I mentioned the Internet of Things. Um, and, and they noted earlier with uh, the toilet, but you have a lot of the wearables, you know, TVs, ovens, um, Nest, or, or I don't know if it's called Nest anymore, but that controls your home. Um, if you can imagine getting hacked and, and having your furnace, you know, be at 100 degrees when you get home on a 100 degree day. Um, Webcam, so you have these these children webcam or, um, uh, baby monitors, I mean, doc, very well documented um, hacks of that sort. Uh, and now you have this, I can't believe we have this, where you can see what's in your refrigerator for your grocery list, right? Um, yeah, but if, if there's, obviously it's public, some, so there's some sort of public interface, because if you can see it from the grocery store. Um, so, I mean, you could potentially hack that thing, that motor, and just let it spin at high revolutions and burn it up. Or, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Um, I'm sure somebody will figure out something uh, to damage that IoT type space. Uh, but yeah, you could look in your refrigerator now, and apparently now your toilet. <laughs> um, so some of these uh, uh, self-driving cars, uh, is everybody a fan of these? I mean, I, I think that it's, it's going to happen, but I don't know if that's ultimately going to work. Uh, driving is a very cognitive thing that we as humans do. Um, I think if we stop start if we stop driving and stop having that cognitive thought, just like anything else, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Um, what's it going to look like, or what are we going to look like as a society 25, 30, 40 years from now when we don't we don't have that thought process, right? Um, that's just my opinion, my, my prediction, I should say. Um, and, and, and how many cities and municipalities uh, uh, survive on speeding tickets, parking tickets, things of that sort? If you have self-driving cars that cannot speed, are these cities going to go bankrupt or they have to consolidate or, you know, what's going to happen to them as, as, as these cities? You know, they got to raise taxes potentially, right? I mean, nobody wants more taxes because they rely a lot of that on, on, um, Speeding tickets, but then you can say the uh, the Ohio State Highway Patrol would go out of business. Thankfully, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but again, what would happen, right? Well, I'm 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 getting to that because uh, is it on this slide? No. So, getting to that. When you buy a new car or when you buy a self-driving car, you're going to have to most likely sign some type of end-user license agreement because it is software, right? So if you tamper with that software or if you do something not, I mean, who reads the EULA? I mean, I read it all the time, right? I mean, it's a big, long 40-page document. Um, but you're going to have to sign one, potentially. And if you say, it's going to say in there, if you do this, 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 or that, you may not be covered. I mean, there's there's all sorts of different things that, that are going to happen with a self-driving car. So, well, I, and that's the thing, right? It, I, I think they're always going to have that those folks that want to continue to put the pedal to the metal, and some that are like, you know, I I, I want to self be self-driven, but we'll see. Um, and. I, I, honestly, this was done in February, so it has nothing to do with the Panama Papers. So this was, I said this in, in March, um, that we were going to have another type of whistleblower type of situation. So I don't think we've seen the last of the Panama Papers. That was more geared towards the European stuff. But I think you're going to see a little bit more coming out uh, on some U.S.-based um, organizations and or people. So I went around and asked other people in the security space for some predictions. 
uh, because if, if we've learned anything from like past year and whatnot, we need to start listening to the people that are making these predictions so that we, we can fix those things right now. So I don't know, if it, does anybody know? I mean, that's Dave Kennedy. I mean, I don't, um, he doesn't have a lot of pictures on him, so that's one of the more, when I mean, he's not as thin now, he's a lot thinner now. Um, but his quote was, his prediction was there's going to be a more overt show of force uh, and cyber capabilities from countries. So basically, what that means is these these company these countries are going to say, uh, "Yeah, I I uh, turned off your power grid, and yeah, I did it. By the way, right? Because you can't. What are you going to do to me? Right? You, there's no extradition. There's no not, nothing you can do. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that. And I, I certainly agree with that. And then uh, that's Jason Street. Um, and basically, his prediction is, is that the most vulnerable uh, is that the need of protecting more of the internal networks. And a lot of these attackers are going to start using regular um, domain users um, versus the domain, I'm sorry, regular user access versus domain account. So you don't need, you will no longer need that escalated privilege to some extent to, to uh, use your exploits and, and compromise the organization. Um, I have not seen a lot of that, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that he has just simply because, you know, uh, when he said it. Um, but again, it it's, doesn't take a lot to, to do a lot of this compromise. So, um, and then I think this is the last slide. So here's the, here's the last reality um, that I'll leave you with. Anybody have any questions? No? Yeah? You mentioned you were having a little more success in the game. Is some of that because you're able to profile whereas some of these agencies are trying to profile? Absolutely. That's part of it. Yep. Yep. And, 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 you know, it's unfortunate, but a lot of these times when, when a lot of these guys come out and actually do some type of horrible act, then the FBI will come out and say, yeah, we've been watching him for the last, you know, 10 months, right? Um, you know, they, they do have the bandwidth for that. So, but if you could somehow build a better mousetrap, right, you could do the same. Anybody else? Okay, that's my talk. <laughs>